I'll be reading from uh, Restart, Chapter 27, Aaron Heckman. Young man, we've been waiting nearly half an hour. The Dumbledore tells us, you promised to set up the card table for us. We'll get to it, I tell her. We're busy. The old bat has a voice like a screeching gears on a truck with a bad transmission. If you don't look very you don't look very busy to me. You're just standing around the snack cart eating the cookies. You're supposed to be passing out. Which is a big job. Bear pretends to be outraged. You expect us to do it on empty stomachs? Chill out, I advise Dumbledore. Five more minutes. It goes without saying that community service at the Grey Baird Motel is about as much fun as sticking your hand in a garbage disposal. The one good thing is you get to mess with the residents. She's been bugging us half the morning to set up an extra card table in the rec room so she and three other blue hairs can play pr bridge. We've been having a few laughs seeing how long we can blow her off. Five minutes? Try five hours. Maybe five days. If she doesn't like it, let her set up her own card table. She built, she's built like a sumo wrestler. In frustration, she retreats into the rec room and Bear and I crack up. Oh, we'll do it for her eventually, you know, right before her head explodes. That's the art to it. Picking the moment to give in just when she's about to report us to the nurses. We help ourselves to more cookies, but Bear tries to hog the last chocolate one, and we end up down on the floor, fighting for it and laughing like crazy. The cookie is crushed before either of us can eat it. We're getting back to our feet, brushing off the dust and crumbs, when we see him, Chase, standing down the hall like he's on the amazing race in a real hurry to get somewhere, and not too thrilled about it. Ever since our fight on the football field, he hasn't been turning up for community service. Not that he's really on it, anyways. I guess he's back, or at least he's back visiting his video star, the nastiest old Dumbledore in the building, overflowing with them. Bear, who has amazing sight, spots the bulging pocket first. It looks like he's carrying a baseball, but there's a piece of cloth trailing from the opening. Hey, Ambrose, I call. What do you got there? He ignores me and shifts his path to the opposite side of the corridor. Bear blocks his way. The man asks you a question. Another shift, so I step out beside Bear, and together we block the hall. Chase does exactly what a running back would do on a football field. He puts his head down and tries to blast through us. But we're linemen, and we stop him cold. In a game, I'd be trying to strip the ball. In this case, I reach down and grab the white fabric and yank. A dish towel opens up in my hand. Something flies out of it and hits the tizarro terrazzo floor with a clink. Star shape. Blue ribbons. The geezer's metal. Chase falls on it like he's recovering a fumble. Bear and I go down on top of him. Two-thirds of that is ours, I snarl. It belongs to Mr. Soloway. He doesn't care, Bear grunts. He barely remembers he ever had it. Get off. Somehow, he heaves us both clear and scrambles to his feet, clutching the metal in his hand. You're not going to win this man, I tell him. It's not even unfriendly. I'm giving him valuable information. We're taking that metal no matter what we have to do to you. He hesitates, considering his options. During the pause, Dumbledore comes back into the hall. What's going on? out here. It's been more than five minutes. We want our table set up now. Oh, I'll do it, offers Chase, grabbing the opportunity to get away from us. The metal concealed in his fist, he escorts Dumbledore into the rec room. Bear 
starts to follow them. But I told him, I told him back. I hold him back. Too many witnesses, man. Be patient. He can't stand there forever. We watched like hawks from the doorway, figuring he might try to stash the metal and come back for it later when we're not around. It's in his right hand. He never opens those fingers while he's setting up the folding table and chairs. He keeps one eye on us. A favor him. I favor him with a grin that says, we're going to get you if we have to stand here until the next ice age. He's toast, Bear whispers triumphantly. The only way out of the room is through us. The Dumbledores in the rec room are fawning over Ambrose, like he just saved the world from Lex Luthor or something. They love him as much as they hate us. It's enough to make your, you barf. He even takes a small potted plant from the TV cabinet and sets it on the table to be their centerpiece. The blue hairs are practically wriggling with joy. Then, as Chase turns, his elbow knocks the pot off the table and hits the floor and shatters, spilling earth all over the place. Bear loves it. <laughs> Idiot. Ambrose rushes to the corner where a vacuum cleaner stands against the wall. He plugs it in and starts to clean up his mess. We almost miss it. As he runs the vacuum back and forth over the dirt, he opens his hand and drops the metal into the unit's path. In a heartbeat, it's sucked up and gone. He glances over his shoulder to see if we noticed. I pretend we didn't. But Bear's face is bright red, which is a dead giveaway. Chase is vacuuming toward us now, speeding up, breaking into a run. The plug pops out of the wall. The vacuum falls silent. He keeps moving, though, charging at us. Bear and I block the doorway and brace ourselves to deck him again. Just before impact, he lets the vacuum cleaner, he lifts the vacuum cleaner, like a battering ram, and slams into us. We're both knocked back onto our butts, choking in a cloud of dust that the collision forces out of the filter bag. By the time our vision clears and we struggle back up again, Ambrose is almost... Ambro is almost about us outside hmm this seems funny how it's worded ambrose is almost of our sight down the hall i think it the out and the of seem like they should be different ambrose is almost out of sight down the hall still cradling the vacuum cleaner we stare at each other and the minute we get to our breath back we chorus get him we take off after the star running back. We've never been able to outpace him before, but this time he's carrying a vacuum cleaner, not a football. That's bound to slow him down. <laughs>